recording. Good evening, everyone. I now call to order this continued meeting of the Blackstone Town Council. Um, I want to do a little housekeeping tonight. We don't have the, we don't have the present uh, the Pledge of Allegiance, the prayer. We won't be hearing from uh, from the public except for in, in your in, in the case to testify about something that's on the agenda. Um, I get right into meat of the, uh, the the agenda. I have two changes I would like council to approve. I want to scratch the capital improvement plan. We'll take that up at another time. We have a lengthy uh, we have a lengthy session. I want to add a closed session for the personnel um, for the DBI director post. Is there a motion? Second. Mr. M Mr. Miller moves and is second. That you? Uh -huh. Thank you, Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn, second. Any questions or comments? Uh, closed session, and it, we're going to scratch it. You got it. All right. No discussion. I, uh, all those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 This motion carries 6 0. Uh, first item on uh, business is Mr. Ed Clark, Mr. John Neville, um, Lakeview Cemetery Confederate Flags. Mr. Van Orbit. If you'll take the lead, please, sir. Uh, in your packet tonight, there is a letter f from a gentleman named uh, Ed Clark. And is Ed here? That's you. And uh, I've gotten a call from another gentleman. That's a gentleman right behind him. Uh, in regards to placing of Confederate flags on graves in the Lakeview Cemetery. Uh, also attached are the uh, rules and regulations for the cemetery. And if we go to number 11, it says, if placing American or Confederate flags on public graves as a service, it shall be done by a recognized organization approved by council. And that's why we're here tonight. And um, uh, both those gentlemen, including the gentleman who wrote the letter to you, are here tonight and to make the request. And if they have any questions, I'm sure they can answer them. But I do think one of the gentlemen, as a question was posed to me, are they representing a group? And it is some of the Confederate veterans that are not. Well, let me test the waters here, please. Yes, is there a motion to approve or deny? It's by policy, correct? Yes, it is. As so long as it's through a group, through an organization. You that's correct. You're with an organization. I don't, I don't see an organization request, though. I see a request from Mr. Ed Clark. I don't see anything about the Sons of the Confederates on here. I got my card. I think they're here. Yeah. Suffices to me. Yeah. Um, let me see if I get. Let me see if I need you. Need you to testify. Uh, is that a motion? Yes. Sir. You're moving to approve. Is there a second? By policy. <clears throat> yes. Second for discussion. All right. So, Mr. Nash has moved, and Mr. Allman is second to approve per policy number eleven in our Lakeview Cemetery. Regulations. Is there any discussion, Council? Yeah, I have a question. Um, thank you for coming. Come forward, please, sir. If you would come forward. You, Mr. Clark. <coughs> thank you. Yes, Miss Williams, you have the floor. How are you, Mr. Clark? How are you, with, um, Councilman um, Page? Um, the letter was represented for yourself. I would feel better if we had our letter from the sons of the Confederate to go with what our policy said versus from an individual. I sent one. I mean, anybody, I mean, I, I have no doubt that you're part of the organization, yes. but is the organization making the request for our policy? I mean, anybody can make a request. I mean, it's signed Ed Clark. It doesn't say you're the president of this organization. There's no letterhead, no contact number of the organization. There's nothing on here, just your personal information, personal address. And it doesn't even mention the Sons of Confederates, to be honest with you. I thought I had put, I am a member of the SCV. I just don't think the request has been put in by the proper <coughs> organization. I think we can 
fix that. I mean, I think we can get something with contact information and, and maybe alter it if we can't get a hold of you or something like that, if there's a, ever an issue. I think we can handle it. We don't have an application form. So Mr. Clark did what he thought he was doing was correct. Um, and we hadn't corrected him otherwise. I did have a question that posed by you, are they an organization? And I did ask the gentleman if previously if they were an organization. But you could be a member of an organization and make a request and the organization doesn't know anything doesn't about know anything it. about it. So Well, is it <coughs> Council, I would recommend that you take up this take up this request and your approval would Depending upon whatever documentation that you see fit. I, I believe you live. I live in Danville. Live in Dan I, So on a technicality, me personally, I would hate to bring a man two hours from home <coughs> on a technicality. So I would like, like council to take this up at its merits, not the technicalities, and we can work the details. To, to amend to say that once we receive on a letterhead of an organization, I have some questions about the policy. Let me, let me handle this motion. Um, However, the council wants to see. I just, I think the merits there, and I can understand where the concern comes from. This it doesn't come from this personal letter. Just if it had some kind of beef behind it, I guess you could. Mr. Allman, you second that. I'm, are you okay with this second? Can we? Can we? Follow the policy. Can we? Can we finish the discussion? Let me, let, me get this, let me get this finished, please. Um, you say you, okay. All right, discussion. Well, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I didn't hear the motion because I thought we were in discussion on the first one. But um, he's amended his motion. Amended it to amended approval. It okay, Philip, I got some. Work gets done, that it would be I got some. I got some question about the policy itself for the town manager, Philip. When we sell a plot, <clears throat> that's private property. Once we sell it to the owner, is that right? <clears throat> Discussed a little bit earlier. I'm just getting near the microphone. I ain't trying to get up on you too close. <laughs> when we sell these parcels, we don't actually give a deed, but we do give a certificate. And you guys, you sign them. The mayor signs them. Uh, that certificate actually does transfer the ownership of that four by ten spot to an individual or to a family or to whoever it is that's purchasing it. So, I would say if it if it's public or private, it would be private property. And so, what what? right does the town have to tell somebody that they can come put something on my private property without my without asking me well i think it really started with american flags and betty Branham, and that's how the process started and previous councils thought that was not a, a particular issue uh i guess at some point the confederate sons of confederate veterans or whatever group uh started putting the confederate flags in there and because we had so many vandalism issues in the cemetery with confederate monuments and confederate flags uh in the past that was the purpose of this being added into the policy because of the amount of vandalism that we were having. So we wanted to be able to track who it was that was doing these kind of things. I don't think it was a matter of we don't want American flag placed on graves and Memorial Day. We don't want Confederate flag. It was just, man, we are getting all kinds of stolen items that are being dumped in our cemetery, being dumped in the woods behind our cemetery that are missing from our cemetery. So we wanted to make sure we knew who was going in there. State code does not permit us to close the cemetery. Mm -hmm. I think we learned that as well, that you got to leave it open because people have to have access to graves and that sort of, so we couldn't put a gate on it and close it at night. Uh, so this was one way to try to track who was coming and going in the cemetery. And there's no doubt that there's town property in the cemetery, but uh, we're talking about particular plots, which are private property. And I, I can understand the thinking of the town here with the policy, but did we run it by legal at that point in time? I, I, I'm going to be honest. I did get a few calls in the last year when, uh, about some folks saying that a flag had been on their family's grave that they didn't want there. We can't put American flags on veterans' graves, but if that's the will of the council, that did so be it. But, uh, uh, well, I was under the impression that um, you know you couldn't place these flags or any flag on any grave without permission of the of, of the family. Is that American the case? Or Confederate flag, anything that's not wood or, me or excuse me metal concrete or stone can't be placed and that's why i have a pickup truck full of plastic flowers down there all the time or confederate flags so really the only two that we've identified because they're wooden stops and so i don't take them up this, this year we took them up because i was concerned about again who was doing it and well going to the mayor's point um do you guys keep a list of you know families that have given you permission or do you have a list of of who's verified confederate 
soldier out there at Lakeview? I mean, do you have a list of the graves that you're going to put the flags on? Do you have a list of the graves that you're going to put the flags on that are confirmed and you have the fam and you have the family's permission? Yeah, I'm not real comfortable with you just, you know, putting flags on graves without the express um, permission of the owner or the family, you know. So I think I, I think it would be in the best interest of the town if you had a log that you document um, and, and whom you, you received permission from. Okay. That soothes your nerves in your face. Yeah, I mean, there's still a private property issue. I mean... You know, and I, I get that, and I, I really like us to have the policy, whatever we do, looked at to, to kind of clear that in the line for the future. You know. They sign a uh, an affidavit that they received a copy of the rules, okay. not that they agree with them or anything like that. But and that's probably been within the past you know, five, seven, eight years that we've been doing it previously. They didn't get a copy unless they were requested mm -hmm. one or something like that. But now, when I took over the cemetery to try to prevent a lot of this discord over flowers, and really that's what it was in the easels, if you remember, uh, we give a copy to everybody. So if their stuff is missing, they can come back and say, my thing, well, did they comply with the, with the policy? And we don't ask them to agree with it, just that I've received a copy of the policy and we attach that to every burial permit now. So when we give an exception to a, a burial plot, whether it be the direction of a headstone or whatever it may be, what are we pointing to to enforce, to enforce that? How are There's something in there about the headstones. Okay. Yeah, I think it has a, a east-west orientation on the headstones and that sort of thing. So I, I come to you if somebody wants to put a second headstone when they're only entitled to one headstone. That's when I usually come to you. Or if they want to turn it in a uh, north-south orientation rather than east-west orientation, that sort of thing. So essentially it's like... Sort of like a, like in the yeah. Yeah. Fair, fair comparison. I, I got to be honest with you guys. <clears throat> I'm a little torn. I mean, we took an oath to protect the Constitution. We don't want to allow one without the other, and I get that. But part of that Constitution is personal property rights. And, and you know, and I, I get what you're saying, Mr. Mayor, um, that you can't put it out there without explicit permission, but I, I think that's been done in the past. So how are we going to handle that with this? I think there are some people who don't think may not want this flag on their grave. If you're not infringing on someone's personal property, then their rights aren't being trampled on. You know, if if council allowed them to put flags willy-nilly everywhere they would, you, I, think you, I think you're right. And, and, but if, if they are required to have a log and required to have permission, and at such time, if that's not being done, then I would ask the council to revoke the permission. So, uh, you know, I just don't, I, I don't, uh, you make a great, you make a great um, presentation, but I, being that he's restricted where you can put those, I, I don't see the problem with it, but it's council's decision. I'm just here to run a meeting. Any more discussion? I got a question. Yes, sir. <coughs> okay. And you're affiliated with who, sir? I'm, I'm with this. Virginia Division of Sergeant Confederate Veterans, Second Pass Division Command. If you don't mind, come forward because we have a lot of people that enjoy looking and listening. Be glad to. I'm Johnny Neville. I started school in Blackstone, and we've got a lot of good people in this organization. Now, what Mr. Vanderbeck, and pardon me if I said that wrong. Nobody gets it right. The vandalism that took place. I am fully aware of that. Now, that, that gentleman, he was employed by you all, and then he went to work up at the Monument Club, I believe, after the gig was up. So, he was not a representative of the Virginia Division of Sons of Confederate Veterans, so please don't hold us hostage for something that has been done by a reckless, one reckless individual. Now, with that being said, we hosted uh, the Virginia Division Convention here two years ago. And as many of you will probably vouch for, it was a bunch of hoopla that was started up there. The police department was 
call to come because they, I, I don't know what they thought was going to be done. But it, it's neither here nor there. Nothing happened. Everybody got along great. The police did, said nothing wrong is wrong here. And I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I feel I'm compelled to. Okay. I think you're getting you're getting in the weeds, okay. and I, th I don't think you're helping your cause. Okay. Um, bringing back the past, you know what's happened in the future. I don't think any of the incidents that you've mentioned is going to okay. hurt this application at all. Okay. Sorry. Excuse okay. me. Yes, sir. I, I I have been the one to put these flags up there. I was leading to all of that. Well, let's stick to the flags. If okay. You know. All right. So we've been putting those flags out there for years. I knew nothing about any of this, that it was a requirement. Now, as far as sending you something on a letterhead, I have not a problem with that. Like I said, I support Blackstone, and I, I, don't, I don't want any ill feelings because there's no mal intent here at all. Right. The CSA stands for the Confederate States of America, and they're all Americans. Right. Uh, uh, well, I don't want to get in debating that issue with you. It's a simple matter of whether or not we're going to file a policy or not, okay. and how we're going to execute it. Okay. okay? And, yes. and I'm not. Going, we're not going in the weeds anymore. I just I, want to I, let you I know. Try to be kind about it, That's but let's okay. just let's get to the let's get to the meat of this. Well, so, if, Council, if you have any more questions for the gentleman, we'll move. Well, on. yeah, I know. I'm glad the mayor stopped you because I'm sure you have a lot of great people in your organization, but there are some things that there are folks even in this room that said. <clears throat> that I, I I don't have to agree with and doesn't make me want to be very welcoming. I think the gentleman next to you in Danville not not long ago, 10 years maybe, told a group of peaceful protesters protesters uh, to go back to Africa. And uh, you know, and then he stood by it. That's and true. so, you know, when we you know he opened the door when he said there's I'll a lot of great people. I did not say and, that. Hey, hey, look, oh, look. Oh, 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 oh. Ain't about this now. Uh -uh. No, it's not. No, it's not and, and about this. So, hey, y'all need to table this until y'all decide what you're going to do. No, we're going to decide right now. No, but, but, but we're hey, not going any more of this. Hey, let's break it. No. So, All right, Mr. Miller, I got this, okay? So, any other questions or discussion? Phil, yeah, Philip, I got a question for you. Yeah. When we voted to take the flags down a few months back, uh, one of the things that you said is they were blanketed all over the cemetery. Is that right? Over 100 of them, I suspect. Just wanted to just point that out. They're willy nilly. I mean, they no, they're on Confederate graves. Exactly. They're not on like the side of the road or anything. They were on individual graves. That's the question. Right. Not Confederate. Right. Before did, I, I yes. assume. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yes, you may. Um, we'll get everybody seated. We'll, we'll That's a motion that requires a second. That's a motion. If you look it up in Robert's Rules, it requires a second and a vote, a three, a two thirds vote to call for the question. Man, you don't need to go there. I, well, can, quote, you know, I, can, I can quote you stuff too. I'm just saying okay? that's, that's what That's it not is. what we're here for. We're here to run the business of the town. I'm a, it, we have a properly. A motion that was properly seconded by Mr. Nash and Mr. Allman. <clears throat> I asked for a roll call vote, and I believe that's what Ms. Wynn, is that correct? Mr. Page. No. <clears throat> I say um, yes with the letter here. With right, the and, letter. That, and that that's was the motion. motion. Yes, yes I just want to put that out there. We just need that. Not I have problem. no problem with the flags. Mr. Miller? With the letter. With the letter, yes, sir. Is that an aye? Sure. Okay. Aye. I with the letter. That motion carries five one. Well, you'll receive. I will. I will get this letter to you that what what the council requires. Um, and well, we I have your address. That. We have your address. Who am I sending it to? You'll we'll send it to me. I hope. That's okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Will okay. you leave the? Yeah. 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 Yes, ma'am. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You'll send your contact information to the man. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank y'all. I love you. Hey, we're, we're gonna get through this. I promise. Yes, sir. If you ever have a problem. Don't have a steady call. Thank y'all. Appreciate Thank you. you so much. Yes, sir. I Mr. Appreciate Mr. Floyd Hill. Mr. Floyd Hill, you're next, sir. 
Council, is everyone familiar with, with the request from Mr. Hill? Do you have any questions for the manager or for Mr. Hill? There's a, some notices that have been put together and telling folks to come to the meeting just for your information while you're standing up if you have any questions or anything. Okay, first to start off with the Rita. We didn't know exactly what day he was coming home. <coughs> I asked Miss um, Jennifer. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma and she told me about it. And I said, I didn't exactly know what day he was coming, so that's why I said it's three days. And then I told her when I seen him, I said, no, just one day. Okay, so let's clarify that. It's no, not three days. No, the only thing no, you're no. asking for is one day. And that's the 4th of July? And the 4th of yes. July. Only. And you've asked for 7 to midnight. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. It's more than just like a family. A family get together because he hasn't been home in a year. So he wants to see everybody. And the way they drive up and down loop, I don't want my kids, the grandkids and kids out there in the street. Is there any way it could be 5 to 10 instead of 7 to midnight? It could be. We just had some issues with loud noises late at night. And yeah, from exactly. the being all sad. So, and earlier in the day, I love a good party. Oh, yeah. I, I love, love a good party. <laughs> we didn't talk to everybody around there, yeah. and they said they don't have no problem yeah. with it. I do want to let you guys know that there was a family reunion that was held last year. God, we got a call like on Friday or Thursday that it's going to happen. So, Sam and I, and I think council has given authorization that we can close streets, and it would from three to nine. Freeman, Freeman Street from Falls to Luke. And a family reunion, and because we didn't have council there, we told them nine o'clock. Right. We had to take everything up at nine o'clock. Right. So I don't know what the consistency is and what you guys would like to do, but we did have a family reunion that has been approved in the past, and they didn't call us until like the day before. Hey, can you bring the cones out? We got this thing going on with Floyd, but we told them they had to it one night. And you had to have it up by 9 o'clock. I think it was, that's, what, that's what Harris Fitzgerald has to have it up to. That's and that's what we based it on. Was nine yeah, it's her ward. I mean, you know. That's what we based it on was the Her uh, Fitzgerald Street family reunion. If a, if a motion is, being, is to be made, I'd appreciate you doing it. And would you please include waiving the or noise ordinance? Um, yeah. Thank you for coming up. And thank you, Sam, for um, serving our country. I have got several um, calls from the um, neighborhood, some good, some positive. And I was confused as Mr. Miller was also, but now I'm glad to see it's one day. And I motioned that we be consistent what we're doing with everybody, do from three to nine, and we will waive the noise um, ordinance for that time. Ms. Williams moves, is there a second? Second. And Mr. Miller seconds, is there any uh, anything else? And you approve of the street closure? Yes. Okay. And I do approve of the street closure. Any, any more discussion, Council? I think that would be appropriate because uh, even though it's a summer uh, activity, even with children being out there after nine o'clock, they should be indoors and somewhere safe. So uh, that should be appropriate time. And I would love an invitation. You're welcome. <laughs> All of you. Anything else, Council? Did we have any complaints or concerns that were called into the town that were negative? Were they negative or positive? They were not in favor. Not in favor. I think me and Ms. Williams shared with each other. Yes. Okay. No one had one call. I mean, but I think it was the concern of how late. And there was a mother. There was a. There was a mother. There was a mother on a Courier Record news article online who made a comment who was talking about the kids and stuff. I think the nine o'clock will handle that. So I'm I'm fine with that. Yeah. Anything else, Council? Ms. Williams has moved, and Mr. Miller is properly second that we will. Um, for this Luke Street 4th of July gathering. We will authorize the street closure, waive the noise ordinance, and, and allow this from 3 to 9. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Is there any opposed? This motion carries 6-0. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Thank, Thank you for your son's service. You all are welcome to come see some fireworks and get some chilling, get some hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Have a fun, safe time. <laughs>
Next on the agenda is Mr. Fred Han Hanbury and the letter that he provided. <laughs> I envy children they can sleep on a barbed wire fence you know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the older you get Amber, you need a little bit more it's so good to see you, Thank you. Um, I had all intentions of sitting down with the, with the town manager but I had a delightful uh, 12 day trip to southern Florida so what we'd like to do is while you're here um, go over this stuff and maybe we can get some answers from town manager and get some direction from council if needed. Is that agreeable to you, sir? That's agreeable. All right. So, um, Mr. Mr. Van Norbeck, did I get it right? Van Norbeck, did I get it right? Did he right? Am, did I get the name right? Uh, no, nobody does. Okay. <laughs> well, you looked up this way. Yeah, uh, he sure did. I was totally successful, not. huh? Mm -hmm. He knew what you were talking <laughs> to. I've been called a lot worse than looked up that way, too, just so you know. Um, <laughs> But anyway, you want to go through this and help us get through this? Actually, yeah, I help me on the utility side. All right. You don't mind, I have Ashley to be here today. Um, Ms. Amber, if we can get to the podium very quick. You're fine. If you want to have a seat right there in case I need you, right. that'd be wonderful. It's new territory for me, Mr. Hanbury. We're just going to get through it. I don't really know how to do it, but we're going to do it. And hopefully we'll all be smiling and and get through it together. Mr. Amber's assertion that water meter readings at the home have been wrong for over six months. I'm not aware that they're wrong for six months. I must admit, uh, I have no indication of that, and I don't know if Ashley does either. I do not. You do not? No, sir. Uh, I wonder how many meters in Blackstone are not being read or read incorrectly. All meters in Blackstone are being read, and we're assuming they're correct. We don't have an indication. We did go to a new system, and... Our indications until somebody comes up with it or we go to them with a very high reading, uh, we don't have an indication that we have incorrect reading. Um, I don't know how it's easily verified. Uh, does that make sense? The result of this is I was overcharged for water for the January service because the meter was read after the service date. I was charged for six weeks of usage, not four, which exceeds the 3,000 gallon minimum. I contacted the town office on March 7th. But the problem continues on May 1st bill. Usage is also wrong. I'm not particularly familiar with uh, Mr. Hamburg's assertion. Uh, old meter reading system was good and accurate, and we're pleased to hear that. Apparently, a vendor is now reading the meters remotely, and that is not accurate. The town of Blackstone reads the meters. This is quite inferior and unreliable, and we don't agree with that assertion. A new meter reading system went into effect at the same time work began on the armory, and I wonder about that. I don't, because... I don't think there's any coupling between the two activities. The meter is being read at random times and backdated to the first of the month. This can result in more than one month usage and exceeding the 3,000 minimum charge, and I, I have no reason to believe any of that is accurate. I would like to use my irrigation meter, but that too is a problem where one is subtracted from the other. Uh, it, it shouldn't be subtracted because it's two separate meters. They're right. not coupled. You have two separate meters all together, and they should have separate readings. So there's not a subtraction. In the math, you don't have to do any math. You have one meter and a second meter, so that, that is not accurate. Um, the house meter and the irrigation must be read on the same day. That's unnecessary because they are two separate meters that have separate readings. Um, disabled, unlicensed, or dilapidated cars. Let's, let's, let's um, before we move on. Let's see if we have any dialogue from Mr. Hanbury. You've heard the town manager's response. Uh, yes, I disagree. Okay. okay. Uh, well, please come forward and, and address the council, please. Thank you. I, I know. An accordion to read it long one month, then shorten the next. So I think you might be, um, with our old meter meter system, we physically had to come out and read it. With our new one, we do not. It is all read on um, radio read, so they just have to read it on which might be why you're a little concerned. Um, but they, we don't have to physically touch them. 
Well, that, that's not the <coughs> I'm getting a bill that says from the first to the first, and that's not what it is. It me reading the meter at some random time from the first to the ninth to the twelfth. Then the next month comes up short, obviously. I understand your point. Is that, are, are we way off on when we ride around in the truck? Well, obviously if it falls on a weekend, if the first falls on a Like this year, like this month. Until Monday, right. Because the first was on Saturday. Well, that's every month. So does the bill say from the first to the third then? In the in that situation? It says first to the first and it's not it's the, the transaction date, yes, it should say the first to the third. But I read the meeting myself on those days. <coughs> and it, it does not coincide. How much what do we what do yeah. we work for now? And as far as the irrigation meter no, well, they're two separate meters, but they do subtract irrigation. That's what they've been doing. So how do you do that? So we look how much water you use for mm -hmm. the month, and then we look how much water you use on your irrigation meter, mm -hmm. and say you use 2,900 gallons for the total month. But if you use 200 gallons on your irrigation meter, you didn't exceed any the minimum charges to get a credit. So you would not receive anything. Even though you used water through your irrigation meter, you didn't use enough to get the credit. Yes, so if my home meter shows 3,500 gallons and the irrigation meter shows 500, you would get credit on the sewer. On the sewer. Not the water. Because the, the, the logic is the water they're using in the irrigation meter isn't being treated by the sewer pump, so that's why you understand that. All right, suppose I use uh, 2,500 <coughs> and then 500 on the other. Are they reading that meter? Yes. As long as it is out when they read, so you should make sure your irrigation meter is out on the first of every month. And as long as it is out, they'll read it. All right. But still, if my house meter shows over 3,000 gallons, it's going to also, you have to take off that sewer amount. If you used, if you used it on your irrigation meter, your, your irrigation meter would have to reflect your usage. So if you use 3,500 gallons total, and then you use 400 on your irrigation meter, you're still paying. Well, if my home meter shows 3,500 gallons, mm -hmm. and I have 500 on the irrigation meter, then I'm going to be billed for 3,500 on the home meter. Billed for 3500 for water, right. and then you'll be billed the amount that's equal, that's your, and you'll be billed for the minimum right. on the sewer. If you use 3600 gallons and 500 on your irrigation, you'll be billed for the additional 100 right. gallons of sewer. Right. But you do have to deduct the sewer. Yeah. Sewer. If yes. you use more than 3000 right. gallons. That's, so what, I, that's what I'm saying. Your that's yeah. that's, that's what I'm saying. Okay. So they have to be done at the same time. Because you're using, I'm using water so every they're, day. They're red with it. They're not all, they're not red on the same day because it's impossible. To well, read see, that throws it off. It's impossible to read every electric meter that you want to use on a single day. Well, and the irrigation meter. So we read all, all right, of those then, on one then day, what do and I then do? the day after we read all of the water and the electric, we read the irrigation. So it's a twenty-four well, that's hour time. Well, if but I'm then, hearing this correctly, then this is not an exact to the milliliter of, of water. Well, and I think, well, I mean, sometimes we just have to, I'm sorry, I respect you very much, but sometimes we just have to take the best we can get. And if we don't have the personnel to read all the meters in town twice in one day, we just don't have it. But I think she's testifying that you know, we try to do it the next day or as close as we can. 
And, you know, we're not talking about, you know, if you were using 100,000 gallons of water, and, you know, it would be substantial. Um, but this system works, and I'm sorry if it's if it, if it, if not agreeable to you. Um, if you want it changed, then I'll ask council to change it. But that's up to them. Well, even if it... But even if what you're saying is true, and we read the water meter one day and the next day the irrigation meter, you would have used more water in the irrigation meter, which means you would have got more credit for your your sewage. So it really wouldn't affect you where you pay more. Right. It, well, yeah, but the, you're always going to have that one day. So, I mean, it really, well, it really is no effect. Yeah. Well, we have a lengthy agenda, and I, I feel like the town... Well, has done their best to answer your questions. And so let's move on to the to the other issues in your letter, please, sir. Well, I will agree with Mr. Hanbury on the fact that there are some junk cars out there in that neighborhood, as there are many. I just spoke with Sam. There's bunches of them around town, and Mr. Hanbury is not incorrect. I counted about a half a dozen when I went through this evening uh, before council meeting. Um, the police department handles the... Um, prosecution or enforcement of our disabled vehicles <coughs> the rules are if it is on a public right-of-way and it does not have a valid license and technically inoperable okay it got a, it can be moved within four days of notice four days okay let me for no I'm a, i'll look away a four day of notice and if it is on private property in 30 days we give them 30 days that we give them so um there has been some discussion about tags, inspections, all those kinds of things. And, man, I, I'll be honest with you. We have not been enforcing, even though the technical definition of inoperable vehicle, is that booger's got to run and it's got to move. But we have not, and I, I've, I've told Sam, we really don't need to get in the business of making people start their cars. We're looking for them to have tags and inspections and all those kinds of things, specifically the, the tags. But Mr. Hanbury is correct. That is uh, a neighborhood that has – needs the attention of the police department and there i count six of them over there this, this just today am i hearing you saying that you're gonna work with the chief and, and we just talked about it he he indicated that uh, we'll make a push over there very well That's we, had this, we had this problem in some other parts of town uh, oh there, there's as well everywhere. they're everywhere amelia avenue has two or three that i noticed this evening i mean there's there's plenty of them Hanbury's neighborhood. you can see it from all the streets because it's not a whole lot of tree coverage and stuff so you see them from the other street to, to the Mr. Hanbury is correct on the vehicles, absolutely. Uh, rubbish removal has almost stopped. Yeah, it's the same rubbish removal that we use. We do the same circuit, and Bobby Evans does it. Uh, uh, Mr. Clark, Ricky Clark, I think, still does it part-time. Uh, we still pick up rubbish. We will pick up sticks, limbs, and that sort of thing. We try to limit the size of the sticks to no more than four inches. Um, but he picks them up all over town, including your neighbor. It, believe it or not, it's the same guys. Both of them retired, and they came back to work for us part-time. So we have kind of seasoned guys that know where the stuff is. Um, but we have a truck out five days a week. Either Ricky Clark or Bobby Evans is driving it, so they're getting stuff. The one thing they won't get, tires, tires. and that's why they're always in the back of my truck because they have, people still throw them out, and I still grab them. I'm cautious about taking them if they're up against somebody's fence or something like that. I don't want to take them if I'm not sure. But, man, I pick up tires all the time. And, um, but they're not allowed to pick up tires. They're not supposed to pick up brush over four inches because they, they carry it to the landfill and burn it. Sometimes somebody will throw a stump out there, and we'll still get it, but we can't necessarily take the landfill. We may have to take it over to Courthouse Road Dump or somewhere and push it off in the ravine. Um, mail and utility. If you don't mind, I just want to brag on Blackstone. You know, the leaf removal service we have and the, and the debris and all that, I, you know, I've lived a lot of places until I found my home here, and I've never seen anything close to it. Pretty high level, but there is a guy on a truck, unless he's on vacation or is sick and calls in or something, we should have somebody on the truck five well, days a week. it used to be very good, and then I 
know, would, would it has changed. There hasn't been any know. directive to change. They tell me in the office that they pick up once a month. Yeah, it should be a little and, more than that. You know, that's not He'll do like a neighborhood, so. clean it up, and go to the next neighborhood or, or area. Um, I did notice there's a mattress on Courthouse Road that's been out there since last week. And I did notice today the dumpster that serves the townhouse apartments that are on Courthouse Road is behind those, behind the fence, and it's become a public mess back there. I think everybody just drives through the alley and throws stuff out there. So that is problematic. That really is the responsibility of the property owner, Cal Jackson, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and Mr. Jackson needs to keep that dumpster site clean. Um, and he doesn't. You know, it, it would be helpful if he would. Do I need to call him? I would love for you to. Mail-in utility payments used to be prompt but are now delayed by 10 days. I got to admit, I don't know if I'm, if that's postal service or. Well, there again, it used to mm -hmm. be, used to be very regular, very prompt. And all of a sudden it stopped. Everything goes to Sandston now and gets stuck in Sandston. I think mail is there's a, it's the mail. Yeah. Yeah. There's an issue. You should be able to postmark something here and stay here. If it's right. Going to if it's going to Blackstone. But everything yeah. goes out of town now. Yeah. And there is an issue in <laughs> Richmond with delayed mail, sir. It's been going on for some time now. So, so my question would be that, you know, that's a federal, federal government issue. Are we prompt in sending them out? Someone sent me and a check in March, and I still ain't got it. <laughs> we have the available um, online pay. Um, so, you know, if, if I understand I get the same thing at home. I get stuff that I should have got two weeks ago. But I don't think this council can do anything about that as long as we're prompt in our part. And if you don't like the snail mail, I call it, then you can do it online. Drop box also if it's yep. convenient to you. I don't know if it is, but you can drop your payment off. And we will deposit your check promptly, I promise. Mr. Mr. Page, did you have a comment? That will happen. No, no, I don't. Uh, but the item I would like to address is we have several homes that are blighted in the neighborhood. And we are working with one. I try not to do too many at a time, but 200 Maven Avenue has been declared blighted by the town staff. I don't think we have a cooperative property owner because nothing's happened over a couple months. So I dare say we're going to see a uh, request from council or to council. Uh, to have the property declared blighted and allow the, the court system to require improvement. There is a second house on Gravit Avenue. Um, I've met the gentleman several times. I, we've taken pictures. Jennifer's written a letter, and I've asked Jennifer to let me go talk to him first, knock on the door and talk to him instead of just shooting a letter to him. Um, we've got at least two blighted homes on the, in the neighborhood on Maven and Gravit that needed attention and the blight ordinance. At 200 Maven Avenue, I don't think it's having the effect until council decides to formally declare blighted and we turn it over for uh, legal process. All right. Just let me know when you want it, when you want it on the agenda. We'll I probably, it if we don't get anything done, we got an email yesterday from the gentleman and he addressed everything else except that. And so we probably just need to tell him because we sent him a second letter. Um, it'll be on the June agenda if, unless we have it resolved. All right. Because the roof is collapsing and the, and the I hope, the, the I hope these comments and dialogue has helped. Uh, uh, it has, but one more thing about the water meter. Uh, we were talking about two different things, the irrigation meter and the regular reading. But the regular reading did get, like I say, last fall, it wasn't read at all. And so I came in. Do you have one of the little garden hose in and out meters? Is that what you've got? No. Well, yours is in the ground. In the ground. Yeah, that's what I had too. And I just. But it used to be fine, you know, mm. came down the street, read them, fine. And then all of a sudden, you know, you, you went to this new system. And Is there a possibility that we would ever get to the point that when the pickup goes by, he could grab that too, down the road? Can we what? Can we get, well, can we get irrigation meters on the RF, on the RF system as well? I think that's the question. Well, the problem with that is the property owner buys the meter from us, 75 bucks. No. Oh, it's 135. Mm. It would just drive the cost up more because those are more expensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're really the old manual possible. job still. If it's, pros if it's possible, can we just see a price per, per meter? Yeah. Let's get through the budget. We'll take that up, okay? All right. Appreciate your patience. I have three other topics. When, when could I? 
If you'll go through them quickly, I'm, 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 I'm going to be admonished here very shortly about this short meeting that's getting long. So. Once you come back on the regular schedule meeting, the 17th of June. Right. And then you can be a full speaker. Yeah, ask, you know, get yourself put on the agenda, and I'll give you as much leeway as I can. You want to tell Jennifer you'll be here? This is very effective, too. If you like, uh, email the clerk. It's very effective. Um, and then I'll see to it that the council members get it beforehand. That's very effective, and then we can talk about it. Your topics and I will add to the agenda for the council. Okay. And that way the council will be prepared and hopefully have answers for you when you come. Okay. Okay, thank you. Is that thank agreeable? That's fine. That's thank you, Mr. Hanbury. It's go always good to see you, sir. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, Mr. LaShawn Rhodes, is he here this evening? Good to see you, sir. Come on up. Tell us about the baseball tournament. Basketball. basketball. That's more better. Basketball guy myself. Oh, yeah. uh, first of all, how are you doing today? My name is LaShawn Rhodes. And I'm glad to put on a basketball tournament for the kids in the uh, at the park out off of uh, well, the park in Blackstone, outdoor park. So what do you want to know uh, about it? I just, I, you know, make sure we've got the dates and times right, and then let okay. council chew it over. Uh, the dates I'm looking to have it is July 19th through the 21st. Wanted to be a three-day tournament. Uh, got age groups from 8 to 19. Uh, if we don't get the turnout for the, that we want for the age group from 8 to 18, then we're going to add a uh, 20 to 24 league just to make sure the numbers are right. We're going to also have it to where we have vendors uh, for small businesses that's around to kind of promote uh, what they do and get the name out there. Also wanted to try to incorporate uh, some of the businesses in town to try to um, – kind of incorporate them into the tournament as far as the teams is, is based off. We wanted to get some teams together, and then let's say we would have uh, Rick's Auto against, let's say, Clay's Garden, old school, and get it from Cliff Gunn from back in the day when we used to do it at the rec center, which I also sponsored teams with him as well. I uh, feel that we could get some good competition going. We could get some um, eyes on the companies that's around here. Uh, we could get a good competition going with the c between the companies that maybe could offer like coupons for the winner or the loser, um, and which also would drive business to their companies. You know, say Rick's Auto can say, you know, we will offer <coughs> half off or oil change if you come in for a tune-up. You know, get that coupon, may get some drive some business to those type of business that wouldn't normally come there, any other circumstances. Well, excuse me, just a second. Um, Mr. Manager, yes, we've 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 done this before, haven't we? You know, to this complexity that we've had somebody actually make a proposal. I think people have reserved it for kids playing basketball or, or reserved it for events. So something of this complexity, I don't think no one really doing it. What what, um, what time? It's for the for this. I mean, it's right. Really, what time is the day? Uh, the time frames is going to be from nine in the morning to eight in the evening. For oh, the I'm first sorry. Two days and nine in the morning to five in the evening okay. on the last day. I'm hearing some real good stuff up here. So can I? Is, is there a motion somewhere? I make a motion that we allow Mr. Rose to do his basketball tournament on July the 19th, 20th, and the 21st. I also wanted to add that. Uh, Let me finish with this motion. Order. You got a motion here to approve. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Mr. Allman seconds. Uh, go ahead, sir. Also wanted to add that. Because of the complexity of it, I want to make sure that security was top priority. So we was going to hire a private firm as well as see what we have to do to go through the proper channels to be able to hire uh, Blackstone's finest to help us out. Uh, There's your man right there. there. Right back cool deal, cool deal. And you're absorbing all this, Chief? I, have a <clears throat> I think it's great. I participated in these things growing up. Um, uh, I do have a few concerns that I want to point out to Council. Um, I think it's great that you're going to have uh, private security because these are all-day events, let's face it. And, um, you could have a, a pretty large attendance and, and 
our officers may be tied up, but it's ultimately being held on public property and private security is generally used to enforcing private property rules. So I just want to make sure that they're focused on uh, the extra rights that people have out there um, on public property. We can't just throw people out, <clears throat> you know, more of an absorb report call us kind of thing. Um, and then on top of that, being that there are vendors and food and private security, I think that uh, insurance is, uh, event insurance is uh, probably proper, just like anything else that we do. Anything else, Mr. Page? No. Anything else, members of council? I have a, a motion from Mr. Miller, seconded properly by Mr. Allman. Um, no further no further discussion. I ask for a voice vote. All those in favor of approving this request, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? This motion carries six zero. Will you hand this? To me? I'm. I'm Oh, cool. You got me started in the game. You got me started. That's another reason why I want to kind of dedicate it to it because it's going to be one of the first. And I kind of wanted to pay homage to the guy that got me started 20 some odd years ago. And I'm still rocking and rolling, doing the same things that uh, through our conversations back then, the same type of things that he was trying to do as being the commissioner and trying to put together tournaments and leagues and, you know, do his thing. So. He takes a special kind of person to be a coach. And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I coached in Ottawa for rec league for 11 years. And then uh, I had a son, which was out in Dinwiddie. So once he got age in Dinwiddie, I've been out there, and I've been coached the last 12 years out there. So well, I appreciate it. If I may, the mayor just had two items very quickly. Of course. Do. Jeff, any vendors are still required to pay meal taxes, is that correct? Yes, correct. correct. Yeah, so if you're aware of that, and they need to get with our treasurer's office and all that sort of thing. Right, right. Uh, and the second thing is, I don't think you wait the noise on it. The DJ is technically, when it's playing, it'll be amplified and be off property. And that was in the motion, I believe. Mm, no, sir. Yeah. Wait, don't take that no, it was motion. not. Yeah. No, it I wasn't. Think you need to wait the noise on it. Would you be so kind as to make that motion now? Yeah, yeah I'll make the motion that we are uh, in the noise on it. All right. Second. Mr. Page is second. Mr. Miller has moved. Mr. Page is second to waive the noise or ordinance during your um, tournament till 8 p.m. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, let me get a vote. Eight, eight, eight and five. Eight, eight and five p.m. On the third day. On the third day. Yeah. Oak Street. You, you follow what I'm saying? Right. Right. Yeah. yeah try to. Yeah. Away from Oak Street. Towards the baseball field. Towards the baseball field. Towards the baseball field. Mm -hmm. Well, good thing about Oak Street, my mom, she stays on the corner. <laughs> yeah. so That'll be keep straight one. on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you give him my card? I uh, I traded coaching the young, you know, at the youngest levels mm -hmm. for this, and oh, I deeply miss it. So if I can be of any any help, I oh, coach that, middle school and JV ball at, was gonna do, at Kempson. We was, was going to try to incorporate um, other guys like yourself. To be the coaches okay. for the teams. I'll be glad to. So it won't be a run amok. The kids are doing it themselves. I, it would let me uh, enjoy my past a little bit. I would love to. Please call me. Oh, we'll do. Okay. We'll do. Much appreciated. Now, I, I do need a vote before you leave, though. I have a. By court, correct? Correct, correct. I have a motion and a second to approve the Noah's ordinance, ordinance uh, to waive the Noah's ordinance for this tournament. Uh, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? This motion carries 6-0. Thank you so much for what you're doing. I have one more question for you yes, guys. Yes, sir. Will there be any uh, permits or fees that I need to come up to the town to pay in order to? We don't typically charge a permit fee. No, and that's what, that's what it needs to be used. And uh, anything you can do to, to get these kids doing this kind of stuff, man, that's pretty. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Need some Big fan of that. Cool deal. Thank you. Appreciate I appreciate you. all you're doing, man. Thank you. I know, I know you put a lot of hours in it. I can oh, tell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, Mr. Manager, we're going to talk about the bond secure lease. Yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot to talk about. I think if you look in the packet that was given to you, we have a letter from the realtor who is representing bond secure, and I don't think she's read the lease. Um, in terms of conditions of the lease, specifically the rental rates, are already established by the original agreement and by the addendum 
or the amendment, the first amendment that's included in your packet, um, it's already established and that rent is already established at an amount of uh, annual rent of $23,750, monthly installments of $1,979.17. And that was originally agreed over 15 years ago. That's the rate. I don't know. Maybe she didn't read the lease. I'm not really sure. Making me feel old. Huh? Uh, making me feel old. I was chairman of building grounds during the time. So, What they did, they basically paid the town debt service for the first 10 years, and the building was paid off in 10 years. And they made a monthly payment over $20,000. Uh, the building paid off, and then we they are entitled to two five-year renewals. The first five-year renewal is what you have in your packet, which is what we're currently operating under. And it's my expectation that uh, you would stay with that. She's also asking that any repairs or any calls, they have the, the they're entitled to repair anything on the site after 30-day notice. We don't have time to bid stuff out in 30 days. There's no way. And I told them that on the phone, and she sent it right back. So my recommendation to council is to leave the lease as is with the same rates, and I would not give it 30 days. Um, well, I know we don't have, we really don't have a leg stand on the change. But they don't either, right? This, this is the second You're option. making a request, and you're not obligated to agree with it. I'll be honest with you, I don't think she read the lease. She did it five years ago, or the realtor did it five years ago. And if you remember, offered us much more money, and we actually were the ones that told them, uh, you don't owe us that much because the agreement that was well. signed in 2009 already tells you what you're going to pay. So uh, none of that's necessary, and I would just say a uh, motion would be appropriate just to extend for another five years on the same terms and conditions as the original lease and the amendment. And Council, you've heard the manager's recommendation. What's your pleasure? I motion to approve the lease as it is. Ms. Williams five moved. Years. Is there a second? Second. Absolutely. Mr. Uh, so we have a we have a motion from Ms. Williams and we have a we have a um, Second, Second Mr. From Mr. Miller. Miller. We'll, we'll have discussion now, Mr. Holmes. This is offering more. Right. But more than change. Like it's, they did it five years ago. They offered well, us more. Why would you not? Because you already have we, an agreement. We already made the agreement. You have an agreement signed by Eric Holden, an amendment signed by Eric Holden, that already says this is what they got to pay. But is this change in agreement for what they're asking for? I understand you have to pay more of a market rate, but our original agreement only states. How much more does that come out to? More? Yeah. There's nothing in that lease that says that parties can agree upon certain terms. You know? The, the rates are already established. And the agreement only says what you will pay, which is what I'm saying is it sounds like she's negotiating. <laughs> Well, let me ask you, you this. I, mean, that, I think council's raised some good questions for you. So, what is the urgency of this? There's no urgency. Can we get Julian to look over this she and come back? Is what the deal is. I, mean, they, I mean, $190,000 is worth talking to the attorney. They're not going to pay $190,000. Okay, well, what are, what's the deal? Their attorney is going to say, we've already signed an agreement. That's what we're going to pay. She's made an error. She's made a mistake. She made a five year review. made it again. We're not obligated to do anything with them, but we are obligated to live up to that agreement, which is not getting anything else. All right. Is that agreeable to council? And we can come back in June. We can come back whenever you want. I, it is June. Talk about it. Oh, too. I would. I, because we, I mean, we because got in her thing, it also could. She doesn't say twenty dollars per rentable square foot for the annual. The annual, or, or is it? So it needs to be. She, she also doesn't say that that is contingent upon us accepting this clause for the 30 days. So right. she may just be offering that yeah, rate. End result is what's yeah. going to happen is exactly what we talked about tonight. You're going to get 1979 dollars and 17 cents. So enlighten me on what you want to do here. Wait and let Philip. If, if that's truly what it is, she needs to submit a clarify. Clarify. It. So it's, if it's no rush. <laughs> I kind of I, I think that's wise that it, you get her to document a lease that's duplicate of the last one. And if they want to raise the, the if they want to pay for more, what's the problem? 
You know, they're they're on a, an extension. She doesn't know she's done. She said mm. it. They didn't say it. The company mm. didn't say it. They don't know what they're Right. She said and it. She is a she's company independent of Arthur Court. Yeah. Right. She's probably not familiar with the lease, didn't read the lease, and threw out a market rate number. I said besides. Man, I might, I, might, I might regret saying this on camera.